Did you know that you could actually bury your landscape lighting transformer? I'm Sprinkler Nerd Andy, and you are watching Landscape Lighting TV. And today we're gonna to talk about a, what's called an in-ground transformer. And I have one here uh, made by Kitchler, and this thing is massive. So let me see if I can actually show you the scale of it. I don't know how much it weighs. I guess I could look it up on their website. I'm gonna say it's 25 pounds, um, very heavy. And this is a transformer, okay? So this is this works the same way that a traditional landscape lighting transformer works that you, you know, hang on the wall or you put on a four by four post, but it's designed to actually be buried in the ground, okay? And I'm not saying that you should bury your transformer in the ground. There's some risk that goes with burying something that could get wet. But if you have a project that mounting a transformer out in the open is going to be an eyesore, then you have another option, and that's to bury the transformer in the ground and use something called an in-ground transformer. So what I wanna to do today is take the cover off this so you can see what's on the inside because sometimes the pictures online don't do it justice. And from my experience, I've, I've installed a Hadco version of this and they're pretty much the same, okay? So there might be some small differences on how you wire things up, but I think that by going under the hood, literally going under the hood of this landscape lighting transformer, you could probably apply it to other in-ground transformers as well. So let's go ahead and flip over. In this case, I actually had to zoom out because this transformer is so tall. So you're seeing a little bit more of what's on my desk. And I already removed the screws. I do wanna show them to you. They are solid stainless steel screws. And underneath, what's important to know, because if you're taking the lid off this in the field, you might lose them, is under the lid, there are little uh, rubber, tiny rubber O-rings, okay? So when you put the lid back on, you need to place them directly over the screw hole to help prevent water uh, from uh, seeping in. So. Uh, if, you're doing, if you're taking this off in the field, be very careful. You, you might, uh, it could be easy to lose these little O-rings, all right? So this is gonna look kind of messy because really all that's inside of here is a bunch of wire. So I'm going to sort of pull some of this apart and try to explain uh, in the simplest way that I can for you what we're looking at. And if I can get these wires out of the way. All right, so we have two sides to the transformer. Here on the left with the black, green, and white, this is where your 120 volt power is attached, okay? And then all of these pretty rainbow colors is for your landscape lighting. So when you install this, you are going to put conduit up from the bottom for both your uh, line voltage, your 120 coming in, and also your landscape lighting wires coming in. Okay, so think about this as having two sides. Line voltage 120 gets connected here, and then there's actually a switch so you can turn the transformer on and off. And then your low voltage landscape lighting wires get connected here, okay? So what we're looking at, this is a 300 watt transformer. And so I believe that means there's actually two sides, two runs of 150 each. And that's what we're looking at on the common wire. Okay, so we have two common wires and then each of these color wires represents a, a different voltage. So when we start with yellow, let me see if I can show you. This one is labeled as 12 volt. So depending on the distance you are away from your transformer, you might use the 12 volt. Next up, the black is 13 volt. The purple is 14 volt and the red is 15 volt. And the reason that there are two is because you have two 150 watt transformers in here that make it a 300 watt transformer. Okay, so based on the number of bulbs that you have on, or lamps as they're called, <laughs> not bulbs, lamps, uh, based on the number of lamps you have and the total wattage, you don't want to exceed something like 80 to 85% of the capacity of the transformer. So that's why there's two runs and that's why there's two common wires. So it's important to keep your wires separated and not exceed that per run. So um, you can have 
you know, two runs of, let's say, you know, 115 watts on each, but you don't want to put more, you don't want to put 200 um, on one line because that will exceed uh, the capacity of the transformer. Okay, so a little technical jargon there, but that's what we're looking at. You might not use all these wires if all your fixtures are very close to the transformer and maybe you're using LED lamps now, which use a lot less wattage. You might only need to use the 12 volt turn, um, wires, but if you're running a long distance and you're gonna have a lot of voltage loss, then you might choose to use the 15 volt. So this is a great transformer because it is multi-tap and allows you a lot of different options as it relates to uh, wire distance and wire size and, and um, all that when you're running your, running your calculations, okay? So um, a common question that I've seen about uh, in-ground transformers is in regards to photocells or having the, you know, the lights come on and off based on darkness on that photocell. And it is my understanding that you cannot connect a photocell to this in-ground transformer. But if you wanted to use a photocell, you would need to wire it before this. So wire it in line on the high, on the line voltage side so that the transformer either has power or it doesn't have power, okay? So that would be the best way to put a photo cell is not in here connected to this, but controlling the power before it reaches the in-ground transformer, all right? So I'm gonna stuff all this stuff back in here quickly, and I wanna show you the bottom of this transformer where the conduit runs are going to go. Stick this back on. See if I can flip it over, because it is heavy. You have uh, four options for conduits. So technically, you could have two coming in for your line voltage and two coming in for your landscape lighting, or you could have three coming in from landscape lighting, one coming in from your line voltage. Uh, but do make sure that these are in all the way and sealed because, you know, water does get into the ground and you wanna make sure that this is completely uh, and entirely sealed. And the other thing I believe is that if you have any submersible lights, you know, like something you're gonna put in a, in a pond or a fountain or any lights that are uh, fully submersed in water. They should not be connected to this transformer. You need a transformer rated for uh, pool and spa conditions. So there we have it. That is the Kitchler in-ground transformer, 300 watts, which means you have two individual 150 watt transformers built in. It is massive and it is a great way if you have a site that you don't wanna have the transformer uh, be an eyesore, you can use an in-ground transformer like this. Hope that helps. And if you have any other questions about landscape lighting or you wanna source some lights, troubleshoot some lights, feel free to reach out to us. You can contact us by phone, chat, email, text message. And until the next episode of Landscape Lighting TV, happy lighting, my friends. We'll see you then.